Hello YouTube. In this hypertrophy series, we're talking intensity windows. Intensity, width, frequency, and volume are the three pillars of programming. They are the most important thing when it comes to actually building a good program that is going to get you big. And as far as intensity goes, the hypertrophy window is pretty much all there is to it in a sense because whatever intensity you have or using the program is going to fall within an intensity window. The notion of window, however, gives you two values because that's the point of the window. It's that it's going to contain a certain amount of values. So you can have a static point of intensity like 60% or you can have a range like 60 to 80% and that's comprised within the window. Those are important because I'm going to use both terms. As far as the way intensity is expressed, you just heard me use percentages. You can also use RPEs. Those are both expressions of intensity. And I personally prefer percentages, but understand that a percentage is an RPE and an RPE is a percentage. They can be converted into one another. It doesn't really matter. You're going to find that certain programs are going to talk about RPEs. Some are going to talk about percentages. At the end of the day, they're talking about the same thing, intensity. And what is intensity? Intensity is the difficulty of a lift. That's it. There's, that's the end of the, the definition. A lot of people confuse intensity, the numerical value attributed to a lift, to intensity, which is screaming when you lift or getting a burn, being in pain when you lift. That's not intensity. Those are expressions of intense pain or intense emotions, but they're not intensity in sense of programming. They are not important when you actually create a program. So that's important. Why? It's important because I firmly believe that intensity is the most underrated value when it comes to programmation for bodybuilding, because volume frequency are already being sort of widely ignored by modern bodybuilding. But intensity is pretty much just snubbed, where it's considered non-important. People will tell you, oh, you don't have to care about intensity. Just get a pump. Just, you know, do a lot of reps and you'll be fine with whatever weight. As if you could just get big with 135 on the bar. It doesn't work like that. Intensity is key because it's going to allow you to select weights that are going to be extremely effective at damaging the muscle fibers. And just that is going to create a ton of side effects that are going to really help you. It's going to save you time. It's going to uh, allow you to damage the muscles in certain ways, meaning that just because the intensity is low doesn't necessarily mean that the muscle is not going to be damaged, but it can be something that is going to slow down progression. It could also be something that is not going to trigger a certain response because the muscle is not going to be challenge because it will be too easy for it to go back to baseline. You hear in what I just said that it's key to understand intensity because there are very advanced principles of it that I want to discuss with you guys in this series, like baseline manipulation, uh, intensity selection when it comes to back off sets, when it comes to what people call as many reps as possible sets. All of these are influenced by intensity, but if you don't understand the basic principles of it, it's going to fly right above your head. So as far as the, the premises and the things that I espouse in my training and I, uh, I suggest you also do, going to failure is also going to be directly linked with intensity and intensity windows because it is possible to go to, uh, to a certain type of failure that I've already described in the playlist that does not represent muscular failure but still falls within an intensity. And you're going to find that the correlation between these falling into non-relevant intensity windows is extremely high, meaning that usually when you, when you reach cardiovascular or mechanical failure, most likely it's because you selected a, an intensity window that for the most part is either going to be too low or so high that form breakdown occurred immediately, which would be mechanical failure. And all of these can be prevented by a smart selection of the intensity window. And for the wide majority of the time, I'm always going to recommend that you train between 60% and 95%, which that's a super wide range. And the stronger you get, the bigger the range gets because the higher the numerical value of your one rep max gets. 
And as you understand it, the percentage and the RPE we use are related to your one rep max. Because if I tell you 100% intensity, what is that? It's your max lift. It's 100% of what you can provide in terms of strength. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, the lower you go with this, the less of a challenge it represents because you can rep it. And in the grand scheme of things, reps are going to allow you to accumulate tonnage. So you want to strike the sweet spot where you do reps that are challenging and that eventually lead to failure, meaning you can't do another one, but they're still within an intensity window that is relevant. And so that, that's where that 60% to 95% thing is born. 95% why? Because I don't want you to do one rep maxes because they're just not worth it in terms of tonnage accumulation, injury prevention. And I don't want you to go below 60% because it's a waste of time. You're going to do too many reps. These have been covered already. But after that, as I said, that range is still super big. And for some people, you're going to have to, to uh, shrink it. And that's perfectly doable. And you're going to find that for every single lift, every single movement pattern, body parts, etc., you're going to have a specific range. And this is where it gets interesting because it teaches you a lot of things about yourself. And it's not going to be true across the board. There are certain things that are going to be universal, but it's always going to be tailored towards you. And for you to be able to apply the full uh, just power of the intensity windows and intensity selection in general, you need to understand yourself first. And the best way to understand yourself is to try to work within wide intensity windows, which sort of contradicts what I just said, because I told you to stick to 60% to 95%. Well, the beauty of intensity, and that's some, uh, something that I'm going to discuss when I talk about the, manipula the manipulation of it and uh, just the, the very fluidity and just uh, fleeting nature of intensity is that even though it's related to the one rep max, it does not mean it's going to be stable throughout lifts, of course, because it's going to change depending on your strength and your ability to push the weight. But it can also evolve throughout the set because the, most, the more tired you get, the more the relative intensity of the, the, the sets are going to change because your optimal intensity only exists at the start of the workout, which is when you should do strength work. And there's also the fact that you can you yourself misapply intensity on purpose by short changing your one rep max to get used to, for example, a new lift. That's something that powerlifters do, for example, when they peak, when they start, they apply an intensity that is on purpose out of the relevant range because they are just getting started and they apply a true number. So they'll say, I do 50%. But you yourself can, if you choose, do 95% on a lift that is not going to be a, through, a, a true 95% because the one rep max you selected for your 100% is not correct. And you would ask me, but what is the point of doing this? Well, as I just explained, it gets you used to the lift. But more importantly with that, what you can also achieve with that type of strategy is you can, uh, you can usually that type of sets, they're going to happen lower in the program, meaning that there are sets where you're going to pre-program a fatigue state, meaning that you're going to pre-envision the fact that even though you should be able to do something for, I don't know, six, seven reps on this, at this point in the workout, it's not going to be realistic. So you're going to predict an inflation of the intensity window. And that's when I'm that 95% that was not correct because predicted through a 41 rep max now makes sense. So I'm going to leave you with that because this is the introduction to the, the, the intensity windows. And uh, it, I just want to talk about it for hours with rep schemes and all of the stuff I spoke about. But I'm just going to leave you with that. You do not need to know your one rep max to use intensity windows, especially with percentages. Why? Because you can figure them out by doing reps, meaning that in the intensity percentages will uh, define themselves so that when you want to find a weight for your one to 12 rep max, for example, you are going to just use weight until you reach a point where it becomes challenging and you fail to get 12 reps. And of course, there are strategies to put that in place so that you don't waste time. And that's also when the virtually uh, faulty, the virtually wrong uh, 
uh, intensity percentages come into play because that's when you can utilize them to speed that process up and quickly get to a working weight. But we're going to talk about that later in the hypertrophy series. Thank you for watching.